So a little bit ago, my friend and I, James Garrett, made this little uh, BB-8 uh, Lego model. You can see that it, uh, it's a little, little guy can keep his head on top while you spin the bottom. And um, it's uh, long since expired and it didn't win any contests. But the uh, I get a lot of YouTube comments requesting a tutorial on how to make it. I'm not uh, an expert in making videos for how to make a Lego something, but I'm going to give it a shot. Um, it's going to start off by saying I'm only going to talk about building this thing, the little base. Is, you, you can probably come up with your own way to gear some wheels together and make them spin, and some of the other little features I built in the base are uh, up to you. Uh, this thing is made in two parts, and uh, well, we'll get started. So I just wanted to point out some of the other things that went into designing it. And that way, if you have to make some modifications on your own, when you try to make your own, uh, you might uh, at least learn from some of my mistakes in the past. I tried tons of ways to get this thing to work. And I bought every single dome piece, round piece, every single heavy piece, magnetic piece that LEGO has, and tried to put them together. And I had countless configurations. And this is what I ended up with that works the absolute most often. I did try some other things. Um, for it, Just so you all know, the beginning of it is to start off with one of these balls. These are from Planet series of Lego sets that came with a little tiny Star Wars set inside. Um, they're easy to get on BrickLink. They're usually pretty cheap. But um, I had one of them, and um, that's kind of where I got started. This is an example of an attempt at making the mechanism omnidirectional. So I have some of these uh, rollers, they're heavy, they kept the magnets up, but they have a lot of internal inertia and therefore they're not sprightly. So you couldn't roll the BB-8 and keep the head on top because it just doesn't keep up. There's too much internal friction in these rollers. But it was a, it was a neat attempt at trying to make these things, uh, and you can see, I'll just get a little closer here, it, the mechanism really does sink and rest in there perfectly. That idea didn't work. Um, I tried using one of the little gyro spheres from the uh, Jurassic Park or Jurassic World sets, and uh, there's a big hole in the middle, and you can see that's where I had one of those a, a big weight inside it. Um, I've since reallocated it. This thing got close, but you could not put enough weight in the bottom to keep the head up. So that comes to one of the fundamental principles of this thing: the head has to be as light as earthly possible. The heavier the head, the more weight you need in the bottom. The more weight you need in the bottom is confined. The weight you have in the bottom is confined by how much space there is below the axle inside the body. So we'll get going, and uh, and I'll just actually step you through piece by piece, and uh, I'll try to create a, a page that will show you the part counts that you'll need of everything, and then maybe you can go source them on BrickLink and give it a shot. Okay, I'm going to start off with the obvious. These two parts are painted. I am a avid Lego player with her. I am not a uh, prolific artist, so that's step one of the steps you might have to do is find yourself an artist. And I went and found one. His name was James Garrett, or Good Buds, and uh, he teamed up with me on this. And uh, one of his big contributions was painting this sphere and painting the head. So with that. I am going to demonstrate the head parts with a duplicate that is not painted and uh, I will demonstrate the body with a part that is also not painted so we will move these painted parts out of the picture. Alright, we will start with the head. What you've got here is a 6x6 dome piece that has the, uh, the click hinges on it. What I have is, uh, so the click hinges, dome piece, and then here's a little eyeball unit. Not my absolute favorite part of it. I wish that I could make it more detailed or interesting, but uh, this is what I came up with uh, to make it as light as possible, like I said before. What you've got is a uh, little click hinge, a little uh, clear, single stud, smooth piece, a uh, tile, 1x2 white, and a 2x2 
bottom smooth curvy piece and I have this as dark blue I'm sure you can probably pick a different color of a single stud so I threw this together as such let me get this closer to you you got that I'll put the tile on like such the tile is only used it's white so that it blends in with the background which is the white dome we put the stud here and this little guy was just there to cover up that stud so not much to him so this is kind of the eyeball unit. I stick it in right there, hinge it over, and now you've got the headpiece without the bot, without the rollers. The roller system, what you got here, I'm not going to take this apart, but what you got here is a little uh, trolley wheels, two sets of trolley wheels, two, I just put them as clear one by twos, uh, a two by four orange plate, and uh, one of these things, some sort of octagonal uh, plate with a big plus sign cut out of it and two magnets and these magnets are old and this particular clip that holds it with the uh, studs on top is uh, relatively rare and harder to find on BrickLink and therefore people kind of price gouge you so you're gonna might have to deal with that but maybe you can find another way to deal with the magnets but these magnets uh, they were in a lot of older sets I had mine from all the Mtron sets I didn't have any of these pieces I didn't know that they existed I have all the magnets with the studs, uh, so we would click on something with studs already pointing up. And uh, so I ordered these, and that's kind of saved the day. So what we got here is we take the two magnets, put them on the 2x4. i probably do it like that so that it has a chance to curve in. Take these two uh, trolley wheels, put the 1x2s, your color choice, on them. The trolley wheels will click onto the bottom as such and as such now you've got two trolley wheels I know the trolley wheels aren't anybody's favorite they weren't my favorite but it was kind of a limitation I'll explain if you uh, then take this assembly and drop it on top of those one by twos you will now have the absolute fewest number of pieces needed to put this assembly together what you got here is magnets that are almost the exact right height. They barely scrape the surface of the sphere. And you've got these little wheels that reduce the friction of movement. If you take out the wheels and just have the magnets slide, there's some friction there. It might, it'll work for a while. You'll scratch up the surface of your dome, of your body. But that's, uh, these are all options. I put the magnet wheels in there to improve how fast you could spin it. So you can crank this thing up and uh, it, the head will stay on top because friction's reduced and the magnetic strength is about as optimal as you can get. At this point, I didn't know how you, uh, there was not a lot of options for attaching this. I think this is probably one of the other things that was a problem for the set. It's probably considered an illegal uh, build step, but I just clicked this thing in. I'm not certain if uh, this is meant to click in. It certainly does, but it's a little bit more takes a little bit more effort than a regular Lego connection. So now I've got my roller. I got a little head. I couldn't get the antennas on top because I just don't have a dome with studs on top. Uh, and therefore there's no antenna. All right, so let's move on to the body. As we started with, this is a planetary sphere from the old Lego sets, uh, Star Wars sets that uh, came with a little Lego Star Wars inside. I don't remember what this planet is. I think the one that I painted was a Tatooine. You need the smooth one. There's some that are uh, like the Death Star. Death Star not going to work. Death Star uh, has got too many grooves and got the nice uh, dish. So that's not going to work. Uh, you know what it's actually called. Um, so you cleave this open. And you find the goodies inside. Here is a nice scooped out one. My friend uh, James, as I mentioned before, painted the inside white. He did a good job. We'll put this over here. We'll take this and put it over there. What you now have is a weight. The weight is uh, one, more, one thing that just took forever to design. And the problem here is you want to get the absolute most weight you can possibly get underneath the axle without touching the inside of this thing on any dimension because you don't want to scrape it. As soon as it scrapes, you got too much friction, it won't roll. So you want this thing to be loose, you want it to swing freely, and you want it to be heavy as possible. Since I'm not going to remember how to build this, I'm going to build it, demo it in sub-assemblies. So let's get started. 
subassembly number one is the upper magnets. This is as little as I could come up with, the lightest way to hold these magnets up. As I said before, these magnets count against your weight in the base. These magnets counteract it, and you could put a third magnet up here and it won't swing as well. So I can only get two. Two means less magnetic strength. Less magnetic strength means the head has to be lighter and uh, has less friction. So these are all compromises I made along the way. So we'll go into showing how this thing was put together. Here's the parts that we need to make the magnet holders. We'll start off with two magnets. These are the uh, magnets, once again, from like Amtron sets. They stopped selling them. I believe it's because of uh, swallowing hazards. Uh, so there's the 2x2 two two magnet holder base. They're still available on BrickLink and other used markets. You're going to take a, uh, a little 1x2 with a click, click hinge on top. One of these little hinge to axle converters. So now you have a hinge to axle converter. I'm going to stick in the little two length axle. Stick this hinge the other way so now it is uh, perpendicular to the original hinge. This is a axle to hinge mail. And here is the uh, one by two with click ax a click hinge. I'll put that on top. Now I will then take these two and mount them little magnets on top as such, and there you have it. It's asymmetrical, but that's just to give it some stability. I tried it with only one axle and it had uh, had some issues. So I'll put that to the side. Next, this is a little sub-assembly that I added as an update at some point, and that was uh, to create these little uh, boxes. The little boxes uh, are basically identical, just a different, uh, different printed piece on the front. My concept here was, I was trying to make it a little bit more robotic. So on the inside here, you can see the little data drive that is basically the whole point of the movie. So I made it so there's a little data drive, and it could hide inside the BB-8 unit, and, um, and there you go, and these little antenna would keep it uh, secure with their friction. Okay, so now we're going to build the little saddlebags. You're going to need two of them. I'm going to leave one assembled. You just build it twice. Uh, we'll get started. I'm going to start off by putting the 1x2 vent piece on a 2x2 two two, uh, bracket with the 1x2 top. So this is one of those top down brackets. Take another one. Stick it on. I got two of them. I'm going to take an L, a one by a two by two plate with one piece missing, so a little L shape. Put one more on top of that, and then put a single stud just to give it some lights, uh, smooth tile on there. I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. Now I'm going to take a one by two vent piece, stick it on the inside, just for. Uh, I will then take. A little, I put a 1x4 printed piece with little meters on it, and then we will put a 1x2 vent piece on top of that grill. You can then slide your data drive in, take your two antennae or levers, depending on your word choice, and stick those on there. Now you've got two saddle eggs. We'll put those on at the end. The next little sub-assembly is going to be the axle that the whole thing floats on. What you got here is, uh, well, let's just demonstrate. This is a, count them up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 length axle. I've got uh, these little uh, axle stoppers, I don't know what you'd call them, uh, four of them. Let's take four of those. You're going to need four of these little pieces. Uh, they're one by two modified plates with two pinholes in them. I've already forgotten exactly how I had this laid out, but I'm going to put them in like such. Put them in the bottom hole. I did it like this. Two blacks. Gray. And put two of these here. This is going to have to be slid right out to the edge. And that is kind of the sub-assembly, and we will leave that like this. I can go there. All right, team. Now we're going to move on to the weight, I believe. Okay, to build the weight, what we have is three of these old weights. These are from, uh, I had these from older Lego sets. Um, 
there's a weight inside here. There's a metal weight. So this is not like a regular brick. It's heavy. And they used these as ballasts for Lego boats. There were some Lego boats that had a solid hull so that it could float. And these are ballasts to keep the boat lower in the water so it actually floats. So we will do, there's some things that we're going to be doing twice. So I'm going to show you an example and you can have to do it twice. So start off with one weight. This is the center weight. We put a one two by six on top of that. Another two by six on top of that. You can make it whatever color you want. That's going to be the center weight. We're going to grab two two by fours. Why not one four by four? Well, I was just thinking that there was more plastic in two two by fours. So I was trying to get it heavier. I'm going to take a two by two round plate and bind these two together. Anything, I think if it was square, it would actually start scraping. So the round was the cut the corners and it made it so it went scrape the bottom. I put a one by two stud. Absolutely every little space I could get something heavier in, uh, add a little bit more weight, I put it in. So this is the absolute very bottom of the BB-8 interior weight. I'm going to put this weight sub-assembly on top of that. I'm now going to build two of these. I'll give you a little demo of what it looks like. So this is, uh, it's got the two little wedges on top. It's the weight again. It's got a two by four, a one by four, and two single studs. We'll make two of those. So there's one. Here's the other. One of those. A two by four, a one by four. Once again, the color doesn't matter. It's up to you. You could try, you might be able to build most of this with just parts you have laying around and not have to order anything. I'm sure some of you have all of these parts. Then we put this on top. The two little wedges just to add a little bit more weight and maybe a little bit of panache, who knows. We stick these on top of the, uh, the bottom plate. That lifts them up a little bit, but anything lower and they'd start scraping. So it's, uh, it's just all a dance. I'm going to take these two 1x8s. These are little, uh, they basically bind the whole thing together. Two of those. They snap on top. Now the things held together, there's two overhangs, so we will put two of these things on it. Literally everything I could get in there to get weight. So I'm going to take, uh, it's a 1x4 with the side studs and the top studs. I'm going to put this uh, jumper with a 1x, uh, with a you know, jumper 1x4 on top. I'm going to put these two uh, wedged slanted vents on the bottom and a 1x2 on the very bottom. So you got this. Does this make sense? <laughs> I'm asking you now if it makes sense. Click those two studs on. Holds that on into place. Click these two. That should get that held in place. We're almost there. Now we just throw the assemblies together. I'm going to take the saddlebags. Put saddlebag number one on. I got a saddlebag. Put another saddlebag on. On this side. Now you've got the entire weight assembly. We'll then put the axles on. I have to remember how I did the axles, Mark. The little uh, black ones go in the center. This is already wrong, isn't it? That looks right. Good. So now, four axle holders. That seems about right. And then here's a little magnetic doodad that goes on top. This will just snap onto the white pieces. And I'll get that nice and close. We'll get as many little angles as you can so you can make sure that you can. Yeah, I'm sure that you wish that I could uh, make this into little paper instructions like a real Lego set. All right, next thing you're gonna do is take your half of a shell, stick it in there. Take your other half of the shell. This is a little trickier. You want that axle to poke through here. If you push down on this, you'll shove the axle through and it won't be centered. You gotta kinda look. Inside there's a little, uh, find a little axle. There it is. Now it pops through, you got the axle. Look at that. Now here, listen to this. So, you don't hear a, a lot of rattling around. You do hear some. I'm gonna grab our head that we just built. It finds the magnets. You will, uh, if you clip the magnets in wrong, it'll repel 
and therefore obviously make sure that your magnets are attracting to each other. So you want two magnets attracting to two magnets, not one attracting uh, and one repelling or both repelling. So I'm just going to hold it because it'll uh, like shake it. There you go. Okay, so now we have our little BB-8 unit. And uh, there was probably some difficulties in figuring out and, and following my video instructions versus some of the paper instructions that come, well, the paper instructions that come with Lego sets, but um, this is what I have time for. Um, I will try to create a parts list. I'll create a uh, post it somewhere on the internet, and I'll put a link to that in the uh, YouTube description as best I can. So uh, once again, here's your final little BB-8 rolling around shot. So you can see it works even without my painted one. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Alright, well you guys have fun and uh, I hope some of y'all have some success building something close to, if you find any ways of improving it, let me know. Um, so that'll be a hoot. I guess I should point out, I'm pretty certain the main reasons why LEGO didn't accept it after it made it to 10,000 was on the grounds of several things. Item 1, they were coming out with their own BB-8 set. That was pretty obvious that they were going to do it. Um, I got ours on their ideas site before they made the uh, the brick-built BB-8 that's uh, in stores right now. Um, so they weren't going to compete with themselves by accepting a, uh, a LEGO ideas submission. Um, the other thing is uh, it's got the old magnets, which are considered a swallowing hazard. So they aren't gonna. They probably aren't gonna make those again. They maybe can create some other magnetic piece someday and make this whole thing feasible. But right now, there's no real magnet piece that's on in the Lego sets that uh, would make this feasible. And I don't know if they make these weights anymore. They might. There, there could be. There's probably some boat sets that have these weights. These probably aren't outmoded, but maybe they're not as uh, common. And uh, and then the final thing is maybe they don't like how I attached this uh, dome to this piece, uh, but. They're also Lego Master Builders. There's a chance they could have found a way to do it better. Um, but in any event, uh, that's uh, how you can try to make your own at home. And uh, you can uh, hopefully paint yours and make it look pretty. Or uh, change it, I don't know, come up with your own thing. We'll have some fun. Good luck.